today's video we're going to look at the VIC-20 core. I'm going to assume that everybody who's clicked to watch this is going to know what a VIC-20 is. But in case I'm wrong, let me know, know down in the comment section if anybody wants me to tackle that in the near future. But I'm thinking that's probably well covered elsewhere. All right, by default, when you turn on a Commodore 64 with a Turbo Chameleon plugged in and you haven't changed any settings or done anything fancy to um, an SD card, you'll get this menu. By default, it'll be in yellow, but the colors, you can go and customize the colors, and I prefer this palette better. Not going to show much in here. Just kind of wanted to show this first menu, and then the file browser, which shows... Uh, the main directory on the SD card. And this SD card is one that I've been using for a long time and it's kind of like a catch-all for everything. It's not one that's specifically made for a purpose, which I've done for other things. Like yesterday I showed Minimig, which is the Amiga core, and that SD was set up specifically for that and a lot was done to it. One of the things done was a small little file in there with some commands to boot directly to that slot where that core resides. This is not that SD. This is the catch-all SD I've been using for a long time, and there's a lot in here. But this is where I currently have the VIC-20. And I'll show what's currently in this VIC-20. Hmm, wonder what that is. Only a couple of things in here, but here we have an image of Megacart. And if you don't know what Meg Megacart is, that's huge. It has a lot of programs, a lot of games. It also has multiple configurations for a RAM expansion. It's 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 pretty nice. And most people uh, who use the, uh, Turbo Chameleon and probably 1541 Ultimate will just load that mega cart, go into that, and just use it. But today I'm going to show a couple things. Maybe I'll get into the mega cart, but there's a couple other things I want to show. Anyhow, we'll back out of this and we'll launch the core. Core is not perfect, but it runs almost anything I, I throw at it. And first off, I'll show you the on screen display. This can be brought up with a CD TV remote, which is what at least was bundled with the version 1s. I'm not sure about the version 2 Turbo Chameleons, but it's definitely bundled with the version 1s. And if you don't have this, you can also hit button number one, and it'll bring it up. And then you can use joystick to move around. This is a little different than some of the other cores where the cursor keys don't do anything. As you can see in the background, which I'll close this for now, the keyboard is mapped. Syntax error. You may have noticed I have a 15412 floppy drive here. And why would I be having that here for a VIC-20 core. Well, you can't use the IEC out on this core, unfortunately, but you can use the header, plug in an IEC cable, and then you can use the floppy drive. Why don't we try loading this game? This game is NTSC, so let's go in and make some changes here. I believe that game also requires 16K.
Anybody ever play Sword of Fargo? I must tell you, growing up I played the 64 version all the time and could not beat it. Loved the game but could not beat it. I always heard the VIC-20 version was better. And it wasn't until I got the Turbo Chameleon that I went ahead and finally gave a try to the VIC-20 version. And it is better and it is beatable. I'm not going to play a full game here. I'm just going to walk around a little bit, maybe fight something. But definitely, if you're a fan of the 64 version of Sword of Fargo, give the VIC-20 version a play. I think it was the second time I played it, I actually beat it. something to fight here. Ah. Alright, right, we're back to basic. Let's take a look at the on-screen display. Up top here you have the option to load a PRG file which is a single file program file or a tap file which is a tape image from a data cassette. Up here is actually a single file image for that sort of Fargo. Here you can mount a disc like a D64 which is the old, old school disc image that emulators use. And here we'd have a Frogger 07 disk image, which note says 16K. Play, stop, tap, so it's like hitting play or hitting stop on a data cassette player. And memory configuration, and here we go. You have a 3K cartridge, 3K RAM cartridge. 8K RAM cartridge, and there's also a 16K RAM cartridge, and others. And each of those sizes matter because what that program requires is what you need to set it to. Largely speaking, if it programs for one size and you select a larger or different RAM size, it's, it's not going to work. The VIC-20's memory map changes with the RAM cartridges. And yeah, if you're video and audio, here again you can swap between PAL and NTSC. We're going to leave this in PAL for going into the mega cart. Scan lines is set at 25%. You can do 50, 75% or off. If I'm not using an external scan line generator, I'll usually put it at 25%. And and a couple other options to play around with. So let's take a look at the Mega Cart. Let's load the Mega Cart ROM. This will take a moment. It's not too, too bad. It's a pretty big image. But you'll, when you see how much is on there, it's, it's pretty nice. And there we go. It's loaded into RAM, but it's not launched. So let's go back in here and let's turn Mega Cart on. And we're in Mega Cart. Okay, we'll take a quick look through here. Let's look at utilities. Some simple stuff. Let's back out and back key. 
look at some tape disc games. Let's look at cartridge games. Let's go back and just load up Gorf before we finish up for today. And if you notice something I hinted at but didn't didn't do, maybe that'll be an upcoming video. Wonder how much you paid attention. Alright, that'll do it. Thank you, everybody. You know the drill. Been doing good about sharing this, commenting. It's all interaction is good. So, ah, thank you again.